we're talking about utilizing um, uh, milliliters per hour. So we're, we're talking about flow rates here. So um, let me go ahead and get started with this in my sheet. So the first thing I want to take into account is the, um, the patient's weight, which is 70 kilograms. Patient um, is ordered to begin the infusion at five micrograms per kilogram per minute. So this looks a lot like the um, heparin protocol with um, where you have units per kilogram per hour, but this one is micrograms per kilogram per minute. And that gives me 350 micrograms per minute, that math. <clears throat> now, I'm ultimately working towards solving for what I'm looking for is milliliters per hour. Since I know that I'm looking for milliliters per hour, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take an additional step, and I'm going to convert this into hours by multiplying by 60. So 350. I'm 60 is 21,000. That's micrograms per hour. Now, the next thing is my available says 400 milligrams per 250 ml. So I have micrograms and then I have milligrams. So I need to convert either micrograms to milligrams or milligrams to micrograms. Since I'm already working with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and convert this. Um, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can look at this and say, okay, I know that I need to move my decimal point over three spaces to the left. So this 21,000 micrograms is the same thing as 21 milligrams. If you don't like that, you can do it the old school way or the only way that you may normally do it. <laughs> One milligram is 1,000 micrograms. And so it's 21 milligrams. No matter how you dice it, you'll get to the same, um, as long as you get to 21 milligrams. Then you can do what you probably have done before, uh, time and time again, just do your order over half, 450 milligrams times the 250 ml. Oh, sorry, that was 400, not 450, sorry. 21 times 250 divided by 400, and you're going to get 13.125 milliliters per hour. And I know that's what the key says, um, but you should round your answer to 13. Point. All right, so that was question eight. Question 11. Says uh, your patient has congestive heart failure and is ordered furosemide 200 milligrams IV daily with an available dose of 100 milligram IV. The label reads furosemide 30 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters of the drug will you give? So first of all, some uh, tidbits of information. Um, so this is my order, the 200 milligrams, okay? I have available 100 milligrams, but since it's an IV and since we know we're looking for how many milliliters, we need to make sure we account for that. And so I need to know this piece of information. I need to know that the available dosage is, or the, what's available is the 30 milligrams per milliliter. This is important to know for the entirety of the, um, the medication for furosemide, but I need to know how it's delivered and I need to know its concentration. And so to solve this, you're just gonna take 
200 milligrams ordered divided by 30. And then that's your answer. So 200 divided by 30 is 6.6666666 repeating. And so you would just, um, uh, you would round that to the nearest 10th. So your answer for number 11 would be 6.7 milliliters. Okay, good. So before I move on to 25, someone asked about question 13. Question 13, you, you probably recall seeing this in, um, uh, or you've seen this question just a variety of different ways. Um, the, um, you're gonna, you're ordered 25,000 units. We wanna know how many milliliters to administer with your label reading heparin, 5,000 units per milliliter. You're just going to do ordered over half, 25,000 divided by 5,000 will give you five milliliters. Five. So you may recall from last semester, um, uh, like the, the protocol itself is, you know, it's, it's got a lot of parts to it and it seems more, uh, intense than maybe it should be. Um, but I highlighted a couple of the important features for the protocol, patient's weight, um, your availables. So this is your IV, the heparin 25,000 units and 250 milliliters, half normal saline and the bolus dosage strength. Then we have our bolus, um, what we're gonna start with, 80 units per kilogram, and then start a drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. So those are um, how you um, decipher the protocol. I crossed out all the extra things that really aren't necessary for solving this from a math perspective. Clinically, you need to know these things for when you're actually working with a patient, or when we're just trying to calculate some figures math-wise, this is what's important. On your test, just like last semester, you're going to see two parts for the one heparin protocol question. So you're either going to see parts A and B, or you're going to see parts C1 and C2. Um, so you'll have two things to answer, but it still counts as just the one question. And then just remind me, uh, someone asked about 21 and 23, just remind me, I'll go back to that, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the heparin protocol right now. Okay. So. The heparin protocol, and if you've been on my YouTube channel, you've probably seen me work this out a couple of times. So I'll just go through it with you nice and slow. The first thing we need to account for is the patient's weight in pounds. The patient weighs 110 pounds. I need to convert that to kilograms. I'm gonna do so by dividing by 2.2 and I'm gonna get 50 kilograms. Now on your test, the way, this will, the way this question will change will be the patient's weight will change. So if the patient weighs um, 97 pounds, the patient weighs 127 pounds, the patient weighs 236 pounds, all, you just need to convert pounds to kilograms. And then if needed, round kilograms to the nearest tenth. All right, so part A says, calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus. We need two pieces of information. I need to know what to start my bolus with, 80 units per kilogram. And then I need to know um, what the bolus dosage strength is, which is listed here as 1,000 units per milliliter. So we take our patient that weighs 50 kilograms, and we're going to multiply by the 80 units per kilogram because that's what the protocol told us to do. 
50 times 80 is 4,000 units. If the question I just said, how many, you know, how many units for the bolus would be done, but it doesn't say that, it says to calculate the bolus uh, in milliliters. And that's why you look at step two in the protocol where it says the bolus dosage strength. And that's where I'm gonna take my 1000 units of heparin per milliliter. 4,000 divided by 1,000 will give you four milliliters as your initial bolus. That's how you do part A. Part B, same patient, same weight. And this time it says to infuse at 18 units per kilogram per hour. So I'm gonna multiply by 18 units per kilogram per hour. That will give me 900 units per hour. Now the question says, how many milliliters per hour would you program into the infusion pump? And so you're gonna do, and I have a feeling that uh, questions 21 and 23 are probably similar to this. You're going to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour, and you're going to do so by using what you have available to convert units to milliliters. So I'm going to go back to my protocol. And the protocol says I have available 25,000 units in 250 milliliters half normal saline. Twenty-five thousand units, two hundred fifty milliliters, half normal saline. I'm going to do nine hundred times two hundred fifty divided by twenty-five thousand, and I'm going to get nine milliliters per hour. Part C1 and C2, there's some additional information to look at on the protocol. So C1 says, or part C says, after six hours, the patient has an APTT of 43 seconds. So we need to look in our protocol for the, where the range fits within the 43 seconds. And that's what we have going on right here. So what does it tell us to do? It tells us to rebolus with 40 units per kilogram and then to increase the initial rate by two units per kilogram per hour. If the initial rate was 18 units per kilogram per hour, if we're going to increase by two, now it's 20 units per kilogram per hour. So you can look at this first initial rebolus of 40 units and realize that's half of the original. And you could say, okay, I'm going to rebolus with two milliliters. But if you hadn't done the uh, calculation and you were kind of just kind of coming into this, it'd probably be a good idea to work through it again. So I'm gonna use the same patient, same weight, 50 kilograms. This time, instead of 80 units bolus, it's gonna be a 40 units bolus. Gives me 2000 units. Then I'm going to use the same bolus dosage strength. Remember, on the protocol, the bolus dosage strength is listed in step two of the protocol, and it says bolus dosage strength, 1,000 units per milliliter. So that's where I'm getting that information. So 1,000 units per milliliter. get an answer of two milliliters, which we already knew because we knew it was half of the original um, amount. Part C2, same patient weight, but now it says to increase by two units per kilogram per hour. 
We started at 18 units per kilogram per hour. So increasing by two, 20 units kilogram per hour. You get 1,000 units per hour. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing we did up here. We're going to use our available, what we have in our IV bag, the 25,000 units heparin inside 250 milliliters, half normal saline. Again, I got that from part two or step two or number two in the heparin protocol. And then I'm going to get an answer of 10 milliliters per hour. So what will change? So on your test, you'll either have just solving A and B, which is most likely what you'll see, or you'll have solving C, a part C1, part C2. After, they'll give you an APTT, and you have to get that information from um, the protocol. Um, most likely, you're just going to see the A and B. That's what I've predominantly seen, at least during remediations. But um, that can, uh, I'm, you know, your instructors always have the, the opportunity to change that if they need to. And the other thing that would change is the patient's weight. So this was a 110 pound patient, as I mentioned earlier, it could be any number, it could be any uh, different weight, um, whatever the weight is, convert it to kilograms, round to the nearest 10th, whatever your final answer is, round to the nearest 10th. So if you get like 4.25 milliliters, you would just, your answer would be 4.3 milliliters. If you got 8.45 milliliters per hour, it'd be 8.5 milliliters per hour, round to the nearest tenth. Any questions on the heparin protocol? All right, so for 21 and 23, okay, these are good ones. So there's some extra information in 21. Um, and then 23 uh, is what we actually just did, but we'll, it's a good one to work through again. So 21 has some extra information. Let me explain what I mean by that. So 21 says your patient has received solumedrol 200 milligrams IV. That is your order. I'm sorry, uh, 200 milligrams IV. Then it says it's received from the pharmacy in a 120 milliliter bag of dextrose 5% water to infuse over 30 minutes. So the next thing is, is this a flow rate question or is this a calculate the volume question? It then gives you a drop factor. Drop factor typically tells you you're gonna be doing a drop rate. No other IVs are running. What is the drops per minute flow rate? If it didn't tell you GTT per minute, if it just said, what is the flow rate, you would be looking for drops per minute. So this 200 milligrams IV, we don't need to worry about that for um, answering this question. When you are solving for drop rate, you only need two pieces of information. You need the flow rate, and the flow rate for this is 120 milliliters over the 30 minutes times the drop factor, which is 10. When you do that, you'll get a drop rate of 40 drops per minute. The reason you ignore the 200 milligrams IV is just because that's just telling you what the medication is. It's not necessarily telling, but it doesn't, you don't need to worry or, or you don't need to know what the medication is in order to um, figure out the flow rate. You just need to know how, what the rate is. And the, um, the silly example I always use is if you and I are on our way to Kennywood, you're driving in your Maserati and I'm driving in my minivan we're both still gonna be going around the same speed limit. You just might be getting there a little bit in a nicer vehicle. I'm gonna be getting there in a little bit more of a practical vehicle for my family of five, okay? So it doesn't really matter if it's solumedrol, if it's, you know, butyrate, if it's, I, I don't know why I'm saying butyrate, but it doesn't really matter what it is. It just matters um, when it comes to flow rate. Now, if this question had said, 
they're to receive 200 milligrams IV and then available is like 30 milligrams per milliliter, then you can do a calculation like we did um, a few questions ago. Um, I think question 11. 23, I'm going to um, use the same strategy I did for the heparin protocol where I'm gonna convert units per hour to milliliters per hour using the given milliliters and units in my IV solution. So that one, I will go to my um, paper here. So this is question 23. It says we have 1,250 units per hour. Notice it looks very similar to what we saw here. Then it says we have available 500 milliliters and 25,000 units. So 25,000 units, 500 milliliters. And I'm just going to multiply the 1250 I 500 and then divide that by 25,000. I'm going to get 25 milliliters per hour. Alternatively, if you don't like the whole dimensional, oops, sorry, if you don't like the whole dimensional analysis stuff, which I know there's some people who are not big fans of that, you could set this up a little bit differently. You could take that 1250 units per hour divide by your available, which is the 25,000 units, and then multiply by your quantity, which is the 500 milliliters, and you'll get to the same answer. So there's two ways to solve that question. So go ahead and uh, take a moment. You can look at the rest of the questions from the packet. If you have any other questions, just drop them into the chat. If you have any other like specific questions or other, other concerns, you can ask in the chat or just unmute and ask away. Um, if you feel pretty good about this and just wanted to kind of see what other people are asking, um, this is pretty much whatever what the other uh, uh, 240 students were asking earlier in the day um, at 2.30. I will be um, back on to review for your class on Thursday, both at 2.30 and then again at 6.15. So you're welcome to jump on again if another question pops up. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Uh, it's about question eight. I know that... Uh, you solve the equation, you come the answer is a 13.125 million per hour. When I did mine previously, uh, my answer was 0 0.119 million per minute. So since they didn't precise that we got a, the unit, we got to, I mean, the, the, is it, they didn't mention that we got to give the answer in hour or in, uh, in minute. My question is if I have a, if, if my answer is 0 0.219 million per minute, is it wrong? It would be wrong because the standard is it's either going to be in milliliters per hour or it's going to be in drops per minute. And for this question, you wouldn't do drops per minute because you don't have a drop factor and they don't tell you that they're, it's looking for a drop rate. And so you do want it in milliliters per hour. So okay. I, my, my guess is that, yes, you would get that marked wrong for doing milliliters per minute because the standard is, and what you would program into the infusion pump is milliliters per hour. Okay, all right. All right, thank That's you. Good question. That's a good question, and I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. 